there's a high likelihood that whatever vaccine comes out, it's going to be similar to the flu where you do have to get some regular booster shots in order to keep your immunity going. From Forbes, I'm Alex Wood, and this is Front Runner, the show where we tell you about the trends you need to know about and why they matter. Today, we are talking about vaccines and how soon there's going to be one. But before we get started, I've got a little bit of housekeeping for you. We're not here today to talk about conspiracy theories or arguments about anti-vaxxers. Now, if you do believe that vaccines are a hoax or are bad for you, respectfully, I wish you all the best with your life. And I suggest that you move on from this video and good day to you. Now, there are over 140 different teams out there working as hard as they can to find a vaccine for the coronavirus. There's never been as much collaboration like this in the history of science. There are four main contenders out there at the moment that you need to keep an eye on. Pfizer, BioNTech, Oxford University, AstraZeneca, Valneva and GlaxoSmithKline, Sanofi Pasteur. All of these candidates have seen promising results which the markets have been loving. To find out where we're at at the moment, I called up with Forbes' Alex Knapp. There are a couple of vaccines that are pretty far ahead in terms of their development. Uh, one of them being the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, which is um, a more traditional vaccine. It's uh, It uses a, a viral vector that's a, a virus that's got a lot of the parts stripped out and uh, some other stuff uh, put in um, and it's uh, it distributes uh, the vaccine into your body. Um, they released data last week showing some positive immune responses as well as uh, positive immune responses from a booster. Um, that booster aspect being important because there's a very good chance based on some data that we've seen that your immunity to COVID-19 isn't going to last very long. Um, so there's a high likelihood that whatever vaccine comes out, it's going to be similar to the flu where you do have to get some regular booster shots in order to keep your immunity going. One of my little tipsters here in London where I live, the expression he used was, I heard a magnitude of champagne corks popping at AstraZeneca when when they realized how allegedly successful their trials are. Do you think they were right to get the champagne out? Honestly, I, I think it's too early to say at, at this point. Um, the early data is very encouraging, uh, but vaccines typically, the timeline for development is on the order of 10 to 15 years. This is a very compressed timeline that a lot of these companies are working with. And one thing that I, you need to be worried about is that, yes, this day is encouraging, but the population is still fairly small. And it won't really be until we get much bigger studies and, and much bigger trials that will have a better idea of how effective these vaccines are. Thank you very much, Alex. Now, the issue of vaccines is actually something quite close to my heart because the founder of vaccination actually went to the same high school as me. Edward Jenner discovered vaccination back in the late 1790s and saved millions of people from smallpox. There was a commonly held belief that milkmaids were immune to the disease. Edward Jenner noticed this pattern as well and decided to test his hypothesis. He scraped the pus from cowpox blisters on the hands of a milkmaid called Sarah Nels. She'd already caught cowpox from a cow delightfully and charmingly named Blossom. He then took this pus, injected it into an eight-year-old boy, and then found that that boy developed immunity not just to cowpox, but also smallpox. From that act, he realized that those two conditions were related, and that gave birth to what we now know as vaccination. But back then, it took the best part of a decade before people accepted the science, and then another 50 years before the technology was widely used. And despite all the leaps in science and the huge amounts of public money that's being put behind the fight against the coronavirus and finding a vaccine, it's still going to take a very long time. Right now, the World Health Organization estimates it's going to take at least 10 years to be able to develop a safe vaccine and deliver it to the world's population. Vaccines are big business and whichever company wins the race is sure to reap some huge rewards. But for now, the focus has to be on limiting the spread of the virus. And unfortunately, it really is 
just a waiting game. I'm Alex Wood, thank you for watching. Remember, stay safe and I'll see you next time.